वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग वन एंड ऑल वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम टूडे ऑनवर्ड्स विद द कार्डियो वॉस्कुलर सिस्टम एंड वट हैज बिन कम्युनिकेटेड टू मे सम ऑफ द टॉपिक्स द बेसिक फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ द कार्डियो वॉस्कुलर सिस्टम द कार्डियक मसल्स द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ कार्डियक मसल द इलेक्ट्रो फिजियोलॉजी ऑफ कार्डियक मसल हैज ऑलरेडी बिन कवर्ड इन द वेरियस क्लासेस and what you all have been started in the classroom is with the electrocardiogram or the ecg so without wasting time we'll also start with the same electrocardiogram many of you must have been uh, observed this many times in the routine clinical practice the recording of ecgs various electrodes are being placed on the surface of the body and on a particular specific graph paper certain waves or certain graph is recorded and when this graph is being read various clinical conditions the body or the human being is suffering from can be ruled out can be diagnosed इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राम इज बेसिकली अ ट्रांस थोरासिक ग्राफिक एंड सच अ ट्रांस थोरासिक ग्राफिक इट इज व्हिच इज नॉट कॉजिंग एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ पेन सो वी कैन से इट इज अ टोटली नॉन इनवेसिव प्रोसीजर व्हाइल स्टडीइंग पर्टिकुलरली दिस इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राम वी हैव ट्राइड एंड डिवाइडेड दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक इनटू थ्री डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज in the first category we'll try and understand what is the basic physiology involved of the cardiac muscle that ultimately is responsible for giving certain changes which we record in the graphical form and which we label as the electrocardiogram in the second section we'll try and understand which particular machine that is being used for recording this electrical activity from the heart to which we call electrocardiogram what various kind of deflections we get to which we label as waves what are the reasons behind this particular waves what are the various clinical aspects associated whenever we get deviation into the waves either in the form of their amplitude or in the form of alteration in their duration and in the third part or third category we'll try and understand the various aspect of the electrocardiogram in the conduction abnormality of the heart that specifically is labeled as the heart block so let us see the first and what basic physiology is involved in the electrocardiogram just a minute yes so as i said if we try and define it is nothing but the graphical record of the electrical activity of the heart which get transferred from heart with the help of surrounding fluid to the surface of the body and from the surface this electrical activity is being picked up by means of placing various electrodes which are attached to the body surface and it is being recorded in the graphical form if we go into the history sir alexander muirhead in the year 1872 for the first time he attached wire to the wrist of a patient who was who was suffering from fever and he tried to obtain an electronic record of their heart rate then in the year 1887 sir augustus waller 
for the first time invented ecg machine which was consisting of lipman capillary electrometer which was fixed to a projector press from the heartbeat was projected onto the photographic plate that was itself fixed to a toy train this allowed a heartbeat to be recorded in a real time but there were certain limitations and hence a great cardiovascular physiologist from the netherlands sir william einthoven in the year 1901 invented a series of string galvanometers for recording electrical activity of the heart we all are familiar with the various waves of the ecg like p q r s and t these assignments of letters to the various waves has been given by the william einthoven itself and for the mechanism of electrocardiogram and application of electrocardiography in the diagnosis of various medical condition he was awarded with the nobel prize in medicine in the year 1924 what is specific use of ecg in which particular conditions or what particular conditions can be ruled out can be diagnosed by the use making use of electrocardiogram there are so many conditions including arrhythmias myocardial ischemia infarction pericarditis hypertrophy of any of the chamber which is enlargement of any of the chamber electrolyte disturbances including hyperkalemia hypokalemia certain toxicity of particular drugs like digoxin and drugs which prolong the qt interval what arrhythmia is basically we all know in the cardiac cycle you must have studied that there are phases of the cardiac cycle there is a systole phase there is a diastole phase and these phases are coming in succession one after the other that means there is a rhythm maintained heart undergo contraction then relaxation followed by again contraction again relaxation and be, uh, accordingly a rhythm is maintained and in case any defect uh, occurs in this entire mechanism of maintaining the rhythm of the heart the condition is definitely be labeled as arrhythmia if we talk about normal ecg we are familiar that it has got p wave qrs complex t wave what is a brief description what basically these waves are that we will have to understand first on the very right hand uh, of uh, mine in this particular slide we can see the normal electrogram uh, electrocardiogram and specifically this is recorded in the lead 2 of the electrocardiogram what is lead 2 and what are the other uh, leads into which we can record the electrocardiogram we will come to know Uh, right here we just want to get familiar with the various waves and specifically the p wave the qrs complex and the t wave uh, as such the p wave electrical potential which is generated when atri atria or the atrium undergo depolarization before it contraction is beginning we all know we have all studied the mechanism of contraction of muscle and into this mechanism of contraction of muscle we have studied until and unless an action potential is being generated and it has reached from no fiber all the way to the muscle fiber causing uh, uh, the um, opening and closing of the various ion channel the molecular mechanism of contraction cannot be started with and uh, if it is not started with the contraction of the muscle will not be possible and if we are talking about the action potential we are also familiar with its various phases and specifically the depolarization and repolarization so here the specific cause of the the p wave is nothing but the electrical potential generated when the atria depolarize before the atrial contraction begin qrs complex potential generated when the ventricles depolarize before their contraction that is as depolarization wave spreads throughout the ventricle and therefore both these the p wave and the various components of the qrs complex that means the q wave r wave and the s wave they are said to be the depolarization wave why because they are resulting because of the depolarization before the contraction of the atria and the ventricles what is about t wave 
the potential generated as the ventricle recover from the state of depolarization what is the recovery state from the state of depolarization specifically it is the repolarization and it normally occurs in ventricular muscle about 0.25 to 0.35 seconds after the depolarization is completed ecg is composed of both depolarization and repolarization waves as we are saying there is a p wave there is a qrs complex and they are resulting because of the depolarization there is a t wave which is resulting because of the repolarization so definitely the ecg has got both the varieties both the sets of waves which are resulting because of the depolarization and the repolarization the distinction between these two varieties of wave is so much important in ecg that further uh, elaborative clarification of this particular waves becomes very much mandatory to understood or to be understood now have a look of this particular diagram on the right side what has been shown here it's a single cardiac muscle fiber uh plus and minus sign is showing the potentials inside and outside the fiber he it is a voltmeter having a negative terminal positive terminal the electrode which is attached to the negative terminal is said to be the negative electrode the electrode which is attached to the positive terminal of this voltmeter is said to be the positive terminal positive electrode and this positive electrode is also called as the recording electrode and the negative electrode can also be labeled as the indifferent electrode let us see what this particular diagram is about it is as i said showing a single cardiac muscle fiber in four stages of depolarization and uh, repolarization right from a b c to the d during depolarization normal negative potential inside the fiber undergo reversion now what is the depolarization that we all know the for the depolarization to occur the muscle fiber has to be in the polarized state first and what is the polarized state the inside of any of the cell or here we are talking about the muscle fiber is negative as compared to the outside that means it becomes slightly positive inside when the depolarization is going on and the negative outside let us see in the a part of this particular diagram depolarization is traveling from left to the right can we see here the inner negative charge has changed to the positive and hence we are saying that the depolarization has created in this particular segment of the cardiac muscle fiber and now it is getting proceeded to the right side of the fiber depolarization therefore is traveling from left to the right first of the half, half of the fiber has undergo already depolarization while remaining half is still polarized so the negative electrode on outside of the fiber is in area of negativity whereas the positive electrode is in the area of positivity that is wave of depolarization spreads towards recording electrode that is from negative electrode to the positive electrode which causes meter to record positively if we see on this this is a baseline and the graphical record that is being obtained is above the baseline and hence we are saying that the voltmeter is recording positively when the depolarization has reached halfway mark here we can say it has reached the halfway mark potential difference between the two electrodes has increased to a maximum positive value see here from this point the positive deflection has started right above the baseline and it has reached to its peak level when this is happening when the depolarization wave has reached halfway to the muscle fiber then in the panel b of this particular figure depolarization has extended over the entire length of the fiber the out inner negative charge has entirely been replaced with the positive charge and on the outside of the fiber there is totally a negative charge recording to the right has returned to the zero or we can say to the baseline why because both the electrodes are in the field of negativity so there is no question that the potential difference will be recorded and hence the deflection is coming again back to the baseline and this is completing a wave and because this wave has been resulted because of the depolarization 
which has started from left panel of the free, uh, cardiac muscle fiber and going to the right panel and therefore this particular wave is being labeled as the depolarization wave because being resulted from the spread of depolarization along the muscle membrane coming on to the c panel halfway repolarization of the same muscle fiber can be specifically seen here that means the repolarization has started and it has reached to the halfway exactly whatever has happened into the a panel same thing is happening here but in the reverse direction the deflection recorded is below the baseline and this is because at this point negative electrode is an area of positivity and positive electrode is an area of negativity that is wave of repolarization is spreading towards the recording electrode and therefore definitely when the wave of depolarization is spreading towards the recording electrode we saw the positive deflection here the wave of repolarization is spreading towards the recording electrode and hence it is a negative deflection and hence the potential recorded becomes negative coming on to the d part here the muscle fiber is now completely repolarized or we can say the polarized state has been achieved again back. The inside is negative, outside is completely positive as compared to the inside. Both the electrodes are now in the area of positivity so that again no potential difference is being recorded between the dim and potential is returning one, one more time to the back. And this is completing another wave which is below the baseline, the <coughs> downward deflection we can say and because this wave is resulted because of the spread of repolarization along the muscle fiber membrane, the wave is labeled as the repolarization wave. I think um, so far it is, uh, you must have understood. Let us proceed to the next. Uh, you must be familiar with this particular diagram. Uh, it is showing the ventricular action potential. It is said to be the monophasic action potential. Why? Because there is only depolarization followed by the repolarization. There are no any other phases seen here uh, which are very much marked and hence it is said to be the monophasic. In a single phase, we can obtain this potential from the single ventricular myocyte or the cardiac muscle. The duration normal is 0.25 to 0.35 second. Uh, resting membrane potential of a ventricular myocyte is about minus 90 millivolt. Uh, what phases we are observing here? Zero, phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four. What is phase zero? Rapid depolarization. Can we see here? The potential is rising very fast and it is because of the opening of rapid sodium channels, which allows the influx of sodium ions, rapid influx of, and therefore the potential is going towards the positivity. Phase two, sorry, phase one, after it reaches above the zero up to a particular level we can see there is a brief initial repolarization is happening why it is due to because at this particular point the sodium channels are getting closed there is no more entry of the sodium ions is possible and at the same point the potassium channels are getting opened which is causing a slow efflux of potassium ions and which is resulting into initial rapid repolarization then we are coming to phase two what is phase two See, after initial rapid repolarization, we can see that the potential in the cardiac muscle fiber is remaining steady for a particular duration of time. And this steady state of uh, action, sorry, uh, state of potential in the cardiac muscle fiber is said to be the plateau phase. And this is mainly because of the opening of long lasting calcium channels, which are allowing the very slow entry of calcium ions via the calcium channels. So here the efflux of potassium is going on slowly and there is an entry of calcium ion is going on slowly and the balance has been uh, achieved between the two that is efflux of potassium and in influx of calcium which maintains the potential at a steady level and therefore we call it as the plateau phase of the action potential of the cardiac muscle. Then coming on to phase three. Once a particular potential below the zero or above minus 50 has been achieved, the long lasting calcium channels, they get closed. The potassium efflux is continuously going on slowly and therefore causing a slow state of repolarization. And this is continuously going on till the state of uh, 
polarity or the resting membrane potential is being achieved which is said to be the phase 4 have a look of this particular figure now <coughs> which shows us the relation of cardiac action potential to the qrs complex and the t rate on the upper uh, panel of this figure we can see this is a cardiac action potential one after the other and this is the recording of various waves of the ecg on the lower panel of the figure top part or upswip of the action potential is caused by all we know because of the depolarization whereas the downward part is because of the repolarization qrs complex or qrs waves they are being appear uh, in the ecg at the beginning of the uh, action potential as we can see from here the depolarization has started that means this is the beginning of action potential and at the same time the qrs complex is being recorded into the ecg the t wave is appearing at the end of repolarization as we can see here no potential is recorded in ecg when the ventricular muscle is either completely polarized or completely depolarized it is only recorded when the muscle is partly polarized or partly depolarized which can be very easily observed from this particular diagram thus that means does the current flow from one part of the ventricle to the another part and therefore the current also flows to the surface of the body in order to uh, give the various deflection in the ecg then let us have a, a look on relationship of atrial and ventricular contraction to the waves of ecg before contraction of the muscle can occur we have already said that the depolarization must spread through the muscle fiber to initiate the chemical process of the contraction p wave occurs at the beginning of the contraction of the atria this particular wave qrs complex is occurring at the beginning of the contraction of the ventricle this particular wave ventricle remains contracted till the repolarization completes and this is the t wave when t wave is uh, ending then only the repolarization of the ventricles are completing and till this time the ventricular muscle mass being large in uh, amount the they remain in their depolarized state atria repolarize about 0.15 to 0.20 second after the termination of p wave here the t p wave is terminating and this is resulting because of the atrial contraction or the atrial depolarization what we are saying the atria getting repolarized after after 0.15 to 0.20 second after termination of the p wave which is also approximately the same time when the qrs complex is being recorded in the ec that means when this particular atrial contraction wave or atrial depolarization wave is recovering from its state of depolarization that is when it is undergoing repolarization this particular time it takes 0.15 to 0.20 second but during this time the qrs complex has already been started being recorded into the ecg and therefore many times atrial repolarization wave or the atrial t wave is usually obscured uh, by the much larger qrs complex and because of this reason an atrial t wave rarely or we can say seldom is observed on the ecg this question definitely arises in our mind when we are talking about p wave qrs complex and the t wave we are saying p is because of the atrial depolarization q wave is qrs complex is because of ventricular depolarization t wave is because of the ventricular repolarization but atrial repolarization wave is not seen never being observed and the reason being when the atria is undergoing repolarization that is 0.15 to 0.20 second once the p wave is being recorded during this time because of its large muscle mass the ventricles are getting contracted and the their deflection is being recorded into the ecg and therefore the atrial t wave though it is occurring it is not being recorded in the normal ecg and therefore in normal ecg it is not being any time or very seldom it is being observed onto the ecg normally ventricular muscle begins to repolarize in some of the fibers about 0.20 seconds after beginning of the depolarization wave 
where it is beginning depolarization wave when the q wave is starting but in many other fibers it takes as long as the 0.35 seconds that means all the ventricular muscle fibers they are not getting repolarized at the same time but there is a bit time lag between the sets of ventricular muscle fiber that means the ventricular repolarization extend over a long period of about 0.15 seconds which is resulting in a prolonged t wave in normal ecg its amplitude therefore is less than the qrs complex and it is a prolonged wave because of its uh, and it is a it may be because of the prolonged length uh, of the t wave coming on to the another uh, concept which shows us the flow of current around the heart during the cardiac cycle voltmeter the cardiac muscle mass uh, we all know it's a sensitium sensitial mass of the cardiac muscle uh, muscle that is stimulated at its central most point before stimulation all exterior we all know of the muscle cells are positive and the interiors are negative and therefore we say that it is in the polarized state as soon as an area of cardiac sensitium becomes depolarized what is happening the negative charge is leaking outside of the depolarized muscle fiber making this part of the surface electronegative as compared by uh, as represented by the minus sign and the remaining surface of the heart which is still polarized is represented by the positive signs or the plus signs therefore a meter connected with its negative terminal on the area of depolarization this particular one and the positive terminal which is on area uh, terminal on area which is still polarized records positive the negative terminal is recorded with the depolarized area whereas the positive terminal is record uh, connected with the uh, uh, polarized area and whatever deflection is recorded that is the positive deflection the two other electrodes placements uh, placements and meter reading should also be studied carefully to know its causes because we know once the depolarization uh, is started in any part of the muscle uh, or the cardiac sensitium it gets spread all throughout the sensitium within a fraction of a second potential difference shown here persists only for a particular fraction of a second and actual voltage measurements are possible therefore only with the high speed recording apparatus how the current is flowing uh, in chest around the heart this particular diagram is showing this let us see the concept and let us try and understand ventricular muscle is lying within the chest we all know heart is actually suspended in a conductive medium why we are uh, saying this that the heart is actually uh, suspended in a conductive medium what as such is present around the heart na uh, which is uh, helpful in conduction of the electrical activity that is generated in the heart and because of the presence of this suspend uh, the conductive medium the electrical activity is getting spreaded all uh, throughout the body lungs although mostly filled with the air conduct electricity to a great extent and the fluids which are nothing but the salt solution in the other tissues surrounding the heart conduct electricity even more easily when one portion of the ventricle undergo depolarization and becomes electronegative with respect to the remaining portion electrical current start flowing from depolarized area to the polarized area in a large circuitous routes can we see here the circuitous routes cardiac impulse uh, we know it gets generated into the sa node then through the inter atrial fibers it gets spread to the various musculature of the atria shortly thereafter it spread to the inside surface of the remainder of the ventricle but for the first time it is coming from atria into the ventricle which part of the ventricle it is stimulating it is getting spread at cardiac impulse first is arriving in the ventricles in the interventricular septum as we can see here and shortly thereafter it spreads to the inside surface of the remainder of the let us see how this process provide electronegativity uh, on inside of the ventricles that means it is coming this way the depolarization wave is coming this way and therefore provides electronegativity on inside of the ventricles 
firstly the interventricular septum then on both the side on the inner side of the membrane electropositivity on outside of the walls of the ventricle with the electrical current flowing through the fluid surrounding the ventricle along the elliptical paths which we can see the, with this uh, red color arrow during most of the remaining of the depolarization process current continues to flow in the same direction that is from apex to the base this is the apex of the ventricle and to the base from endocardial surface this is the endocardial surface uh, outward through the ventricular muscle mass uh, then immediately before depolarization has completed its course through the ventricle average direction of the current flow reverses for just 0.01 second flowing from ventricular apex towards the base that means during most of the time of depolarization of uh, ventricle the current is flowing right from base to the apex but just at the end only 4.01 second the direction of this current flow is changing in opposite direction and that is from apex to the base and this is because the last part of the heart to become depolarized is always outer walls of the ventricle near the base of the heart this is said to be the base of the heart and this is the apex of the heart thus in a normal heart ventricle we can say the current is flowing from negative to the positive primarily from base of the heart towards the apex during almost entire cycle of the depolarization except at very end hence if a meter is connected two electrodes on the surface of the body electrode near the base will set to be the negative electrode uh, that is see here at the a point an electrode near the apex will be the positive electrode because it is said to be near to the apex or away from the base we can say recording meter will show positive recording in the ecg uh, because of this particular recording electrode uh, is in the area of positivity uh, with this uh, i think uh, we should stop here because the basic concept uh, why all waves are being created into the ecg uh, how the depolarization wave getting started how it is getting spreaded how the positive deflection how the negative deflections in the ecg are being uh, recorded that we have already come to know in the very next class we'll see in detail uh, what particular leads or electrodes will be utilized uh, which particular machine will be utilized in order to record the ac ecg what deflections what waves what intervals what segments uh, will be obtaining after we record the ecg what is the procedure that is being adopted in order to record the ecg and we'll try and correlate the various clinical applications with each and every wave interval and segment uh let us see uh for the next time thank you so much